was mom's birthday that day. My mom and dad were working, and I was home by myself. And then I had an idea. I was going to surprise my mom. I set up that contraption. I'm home, Camilla. Why is it dark? What was that noise? I still can't believe it happened. It wasn't supposed to work like that. Hmm. I know that contraption. And I know how it was supposed to work. Party poppers and a cake. A birthday message. <laughs> there are no secrets in the ghost world. Maybe we'd better stop talking. It's too dangerous. Sissy, you're not going to talk to me anymore? I think we'd better get you out of here first. We can talk more after that. Okay, but... I'm going to rescue you now. You just hold on a little longer, alright? Okay, but we'll talk later, right? Don't forget, you promised, sissy. What took you so long? <clears throat> I traveled the entire town in search of the finest bread and milk for you, my dear. But it's late and all the shops are closed. We're leaving this place, right now. What? But he's not here yet. If we couldn't meet at the restaurant, weren't we supposed to meet here? Yes, and he's the one who chose this location. Hmm. I don't like this one bit. We have to run around doing all this extra work all for the sake of his deal. Be quiet. It can't be helped. This place is too dangerous. I told you, my sixth sense is very strong. All right, as you wish, beauty. I feel it. I sense something here in this room. Is somebody there? Can you hear me? Is she talking to me? I can sense your presence, you know. The next time I sense you, this child will die. Remember that. All right, we're leaving. Pardon me, little lady. I was 
your juice not spill? I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm left behind alone. Alone in the room that stole that little lady's smile away five years ago. The little lady is gone now, leaving me with only a few new facts. A few very heavy, very sad facts. Does Lynn know about... Does Lynn know about all this? One other thing stands out in my mind. I can sense your presence. The sum of that kidnapper's final words. Do those two know? Do the kidnappers know about the powers of the dead? Hmm, the plot plotins. <laughs> the plot plotins indeed. It looks like the kidnappers made a big mistake. The girl in the trunk was Detective Jowd's daughter, Camilla. Not the minister's daughter. When I got back to the Justice Minister's office, things were getting even more out of hand. The devastated man was being grilled by the fiery detective lady. I told Lin what I had found out about the kidnapping that it wasn't the Justice Minister's daughter who had been abducted. That the kidnapper had been holed up in Camilla's old house, and that they seemed sensed my presence and were already gone. But Camilla! Why would they- why do they have Camilla? Her father isn't the stupid old Justice Minister! I think the stupid old part is a little uncalled for. It looks like the kidnappers made a mistake somehow. Girl, kidnapped for the ransom of her own father's execution. It's just too much. It's a cruel twist of fate, I agree. And then there are those other twists, too. Like the kidnappers winding up and using Camilla's old house as their hideout. There's no way it could be just coincidence. And them sensing my presence. They seem to know about the powers of the dead. I just understand any of it. I told you before, detective. I want you to stand back. Who cares about distance at a time like this? Look, Mr. Minister, it wasn't your daughter that was kidnapped. Don't try to pretend you didn't hear what we were saying. Ah! <laughs> How can I believe in you? I'm a realist! Please! If you don't believe what we say, see for yourself. Just call home and... I tried calling a hundred times. My wife won't answer. She won't? It's complicated. Oh, why does life have to be such a complicated thing? But if she doesn't answer, doesn't that mean everything's normal? It doesn't prove it. And I'm being watched. I can't have the police go check for me. Besides, if the execution isn't carried out tonight, the hostage will be killed. What difference does it make that it's not my daughter? <gasps> oh, wee! That's quite a pickle, Mr. Minister. Quite a pickle. Miss me, baby? Inspector Cabanella! Wholly unnecessary. I have a little report for you, Minister. The escaped prisoner has been apprehended. Thought you might like to see him, so here he is. I know that you're innocent. I 
I just can't prove it. I'm so sorry. Lynn, please, don't apologize to me. Ah, oh, the beautiful love between a teacher and student. It brings a tear to my eye. Lynn doesn't really know that Jout is innocent. She just believes it from the bottom of her heart. The execution and the kidnapping are real threats, and as time marches on, I'll gather information and see if I can think of something. This all relates back to me somehow. I just know it. You knew, didn't you, Inspector Cavanella? That the execution was tonight? I don't believe I had any obligation to tell you. And you're fine with this? I mean, you know as well as I do. Detective Jout can never do have done such a thing. <laughs> oh, come on now, baby. I know no such thing. Huh? I know two things to be true, and two things only. One, he was given the death penalty, and two, he tried to escape. What else could I do but haul him in, baby? If that's the case, why did you bring him here? Whatever do you mean, young lady? He escaped from prison, right? Why didn't you just take him back to the prison? I think you only brought him here to brag about your accomplishment. Is that right, Inspector? For your own selfish reasons? So are all those rumors about you true? That the only thing you care about is a spotless record? Is that more important to you than saving a friend? Everybody has certain principles they can't go back on, including me. You'll understand that someday, baby. That's enough, Lynn. I'm a death row inmate who escaped from prison. This is how it should be. But, but... Ah, uh, knock knock. My poor Amelie. Is she alright? Actually, the girl who was kidnapped is named Camilla. Why is a dream talking to me in my head again? Wait a minute. Amelie? Could that be the Amelie next door? Yes, I think so. Wow, I didn't know the Justice Minister lived next door. No, not me. My wife. It, it's, a uh, complicated. Yeah, I bet it would be pretty hard to admit she left him. The Minister's wife ran away on him? Maybe they grew apart, what, what with him being so busy? Yeah, I bet you're right. Please stop gossiping about me inside my own head! <laughs> oh, this guy's so pathetic. <laughs> According to what I heard, Amelie was supposed to go to some sort of lesson tonight. Those horrible kidnappers, they were lying in wait for her. But Amelie didn't go out after all. She couldn't. She had a fever. Oh, and so the kidnappers grabbed Camilla by mistake instead? Apparently, Amelie and Camilla are about the same age. The kidnappers must have gotten the two of them mixed up. It's my fault. If I hadn't asked Camilla to do that errand for me, this never would have happened. Oh, right. You had asked her to bring the music box. So, Mr. Ghost, we meet again. I hear something happened. Something about a kidnapping. Some kidnappers are saying they abducted the Justice Minister's daughter. That's terrible. What's their demand? The carrying out of your execution. Tonight. 
<laughs> I had no idea I was so hated. But the minister doesn't have to worry. I die and it's all over. Very simple. It's not that simple! Why not? Because it isn't really the minister's daughter who got kidnapped. It's Camilla! What? Camilla? I checked it for myself. I'm positive. No! It can't be! And by the way, Camilla told me something interesting. She said the one who killed her mother's five. Oh god, I'm slipping up all my words, I'm sorry. Hugs. <laughs> I gotta slow down. She said the one who killed her mother five years ago was Camilla herself. What? What are you talking about? Don't listen to him! I'm the one who shot her! I'm the one who shot Alma! And when I'm executed tonight, that will be the end of it. Camilla won't have to suffer anymore after tonight. For a capable detective, he would say some incredibly misguided things. Ugh. You dying isn't going to end that girl's suffering. It'll just bring her new suffering. The only person's pain this execution is going to cease is yours. Is it true? What Camilla said? Why don't you tell us what you know? Ah, the twists! <laughs> twists! To be honest, I still don't understand what happened that day. It was my wife, Alma's birthday. We came home from work, and she went in first. What was that noise? I looked for the shooter, but there was nobody to be found. There was nobody there besides Alma and Camilla. Just the two of them. So the little lady's mother died right in front of her. Oh my! That's so horrible! Camilla told me about it. She was crying. She said the contraption she made did something it wasn't supposed to do. Made an impossible move. An impossible move? It's been five years since then. I stopped thinking about it. I shot Alma. There's no other explanation. That's what I'd convinced everyone of. Even me. But tonight you showed up and gave me an explanation I never would have thought of before. The powers of the dead, right? That day, in that room, powers that I didn't understand were at work. And if that's the case, it clears up all the mysteries. Maybe not all. There are a couple of other people who know about these powers. The kidnappers who abducted Camilla knew about those powers. This is no ordinary kidnapping. It looks like my wife's case isn't coming to an end after all. I'm the only one who thought it was. Detective Chowd? There's still time before dawn. A little, anyway. How about you see this case through to the end before you die? Camilla was a quiet little girl, but she was good with her hands. She was a little genius at making elaborate toys and contraptions. But there were two very strange points about that contraption. The first was, of course, the firing of that gun. Right, there was an antique gun I had on display for years. So it wasn't part of the little lady's original design. Of course it wasn't! It was supposed to be a surprise for her mother's birthday! And the other strange point was the movement of that Cupid. Cupid?
It was supposed to shoot its arrow without turning around. Somebody made a change to the contraption's design and then manipulated it. I don't know what to say. I didn't have time to think things through then. All I knew was I had to protect Camilla. I made a small adjustment to the scene and turned myself in. What kind of adjustment? The gun, of course. The gun, eh? Come to think of it. There was no gun there, just a picture hanging on the wall. Well, I mean, it would have been taken in for forensics, I assume, but like... <laughs> of course not, because I secretly switched the gun out of that frame with the picture. I didn't believe what she told me about her contraption. But one thing was for certain. That gun was still smoking. So that gun really did shoot Alma. I hid the gun before I went to the police. You hid it? I put it in a wooden box and gave it to a certain detective. What? Y you mean... And that detective still thinks it's a music box. So that's what's... What was in the box, huh? I got a different murder weapon ready to give to the police. My own pistol. And I did a few other things to make it look good. I won't go into the details. When I was all done, I turned myself in. Detective Jowd, is what you told us n just now true? Yes, of course. In that case, there's still time. Still time? Time to solve the case that started five years ago. You didn't do it, Detective Jowd. And of course, little Camilla didn't do it either. So the true perpetrator is still out there. And I'm going to prove it. For Camilla's sake! That sounds wonderful. Thank you, Detective Jowd. Lynn, where is that music box now? In Tempsic Park. Camilla left it there. That gun is important evidence. You'd better go pick it up. Yes, sir! I'll go right now. Um... Cabernet is still just kind of standing there. Is he gonna not do anything? <laughs> He's just, he's just watching the three of them have a fucking silent existential conversation. <laughs> clown to clown communication. <laughs> really fuck it is clown to clown communication around here. <laughs> Sissel, take care of Detective Jowd. Are you looking at the camera, Lynn? <laughs> That's us. <laughs> and do something about the kidnapping, so we can get the minister on our side. And yet again, I say, easy enough for you to say. What's going on? Dealy the deal, Mr. Death Row inmate. A little change in plans. My daughter has been kidnapped. I can't just go off to die without doing something. But you're in our custody, don't forget. Back at the prison, everybody's waiting for you with a special seat just for you, baby. And then I guess we'd better prove my innocence on the double. <laughs> on the double, is it? You sound so determined, my old friend. I want to save Camilla in more ways than one. And that's all there is to it. I see, my old friend. In more ways than one. What say you, Mr. Minister? May we have your decision? Should the execution be carried out tonight, as planned? 
Or should we hold off and wait for this important evidence to come in? <laughs> the order still stands. Bring the prisoner back immediately and resume its enforcement. As you wish, Your Excellency. Please, don't bow down to me. And especially not that low. In that case, can I have one of your boys arrange a prison van to pick him up? Would you be so kind? Yes, sir! Where did you get that chair? Cabanella, what the fuck? <laughs> the van... <laughs> the van should take about 10 minutes, I'm guessing. Your escape tonight was brilliant. Will you show me another miracle in these last few minutes of yours, Mr. Death Row Inmate? I'm glad to see Detective Jowd all fired up now. But I feel like I'm under the gun here. Even if Lin does come through with the proof of Jowd's innocence, it'll be meaningless if Jowd or Camilla dies. I've got to do something about that kidnapping, somehow. Maybe I should ask for some advice from the decapable detective here? Yeah. Most likely, the minister won't stop the execution. Not as long as there's any small chance his daughter is the one who was kidnapped. But she isn't the one! I'm sure of it! Well, it would be great if we could prove that to the minister. Prove it? How? I doubt his wife is ever going to answer that phone if we call from here. If we call from here, right. But a telephone works in both directions. What are you saying? What I'm saying is only family members can solve a family problem. Hey, Mr. Ghost. Yes. I have to admit, I don't like depending on others. But you're the only one who can cha change the situation. Gee, Detective. For these past five years, Camilla is the only thing that kept me going. I can't go meekly to the chair now. I hate to ask this, but would you mind saving me? I'll try. The key to getting the Justice Minister to stop the execution is his wife and daughter. But is there a way? Excuse me. Mr. Minister? I can't hear you! La la la! <laughs> I'm sure you've heard everything we've been saying. Are you telling me you don't believe any of it? Let me speak plainly. I don't trust you. But there's somebody else whom I trust even less. Oh yeah? Who's that? Me! I can't explain your existence. It's not normal. But I'm pretty abnormal myself. So maybe you're a figment of my imagination, a delusion. Would you listen to a delusion? To be honest, I have no idea what you're talking about. I got the bit about you not trusting me, though. Good. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> well, hanging around here won't change anything. I've got ten minutes before the prison van shows up. If I could just do something about the kidnapping in those 10 minutes, I guess the telephone lines are my only hope. Uh, well, let's check in on Ray. Why so quiet? Ray? What's going on? Maybe he isn't here anymore? Ray! Rip. Ah. Oh, 
But I know we have to go to the lady's red apartment. still standing there. You totally missed the fact that Camilla got kidnapped, huh, buddy? <laughs> Freaking... You ran through your damn park. Uh, in order to stop Detective Jowd's execution, Lynn asked me to try and get the Justice Minister on our side. She's trying to stop Detective Jowd's execution. She went to Temsic Park to look for an important piece of the evidence. Apparently, she believes her mother's death was caused by the contraption she created. She was kidnapped because she was mistaken for the Justice Minister's daughter. The daughter of the woman in purple, her name is Amelie. Because of her fever of 102, she's crying out in her sleep. She's worried about her father's birthday. In a case of mistaken identity, Camilla was kidnapped in Amelie's place. A justice minister who sits agonizing in his stately office. He calls himself a realist. Because his wife won't answer the phone, he can't be sure of his daughter's safety and is left only to frantically pull out his hair. Getting ahead is the only thing he thinks about. He's investigating a big deal tonight. Upon discovering Jout's escape, he decided to haul him into the minister's office personally. Uh, the murder machine in the building's basement is almost identical to the contraption that killed Jell's wife. To protect his daughter, he accepted the blame for his wife's murder. He claims to have stolen somebody else's life as well. Inspector Cabanella hauled him into the minister's office after his escape from prison. Uh, he, he is the perpetrator who abducted Camilla, mistaking her for the justice minister's daughter. The pair kidnapped Camilla. She has a strong sixth sense and can apparently sense my presence. Camilla's mother and Jad's wife. Five years ago, she was shot and killed when the contraption Camilla made for her birthday made an impossible move. Detective Jad was arrested for her murder. Anything else? The mysterious mechanical murder machine here looks just like the one in Camilla's old house. A strange tension fills the air. The phone line apparently connects to a place called the Death Chamber. Somewhere on the prison grounds, after escaping from his cell, Detective Jowd was caught here by Inspector Cabanella. There's nothing else here. A restaurant that specializes in chicken. Tonight, it's also Point X, a place that police are staking out. The suspicious couple is nowhere to be seen. The kitchen of the restaurant, the chicken kitchen. The meddlesome investigator is nowhere to be seen, and the restaurant seems to be peaceful again. A house the kidnappers are using as their hideout. Five years ago, Camilla's mother was murdered here. The house has been empty ever since. The offices give off a cold, heavy air, but the people gathered here are starting to heat it up. As usual, the man is tearing out his hair in anguish. The park where the detective with the cap is performing a stakeout. An odd fellow who claims to be the guardian of the park is still here. When the little lady was abducted, she hid in the music box in the bushes here. Yeah, can't do anything else here as usual. Uh... Does the superintendent have anything to say? He does. Or he's brought, rather he's gone. It looks like the old pigeon guy decided to go somewhere else. There's something very off about this place. Old dusty junk side by side with well-maintained equipment. Anyway, it doesn't look like things are going to change here much for a while. Hint, hint, don't come back here. <laughs> I sense somebody's presence in this dimly lit place. There he is. Tonight is probably our last chance. If he doesn't come here tonight. I think this silence is starting to get to me. 
This old man is apparently waiting for somebody. The only thing waiting for me is the end of my existence. I actually forget who he was exactly waiting for. Yes, I, I too for four. <laughs> it's been a while. Hmm. It's not like the restaurant is closed. Where's the chef? It's just not the same without his singing. I guess I could come back later if I want to hear him sing again. <laughs> oh. I guess the chief went out. He didn't even put on his shoes. Did something happen? Right. Well, it's because his shoes are part of the background, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can't take his shoes, they're welded to the background. <laughs> on his way over here. What's he want to come for now for? Well, because the death row inmate escaped, of course. Oh, I'd hate to be in your shoes right now, Bailey. You're in charge, after all. Ugh! Me? Oh, why did I ever have to become a prison guard? <laughs> I never would have taken the job like this if I knew the prisoners might escape. God. Wow, unbelievable. Yes, I know, right? It is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, I, just, I can't go anywhere else here, so... They're still fucking at it. <laughs> but it looks like they don't have anything more interesting to say. Nothing here, same as before. I guess I don't need to come back here anymore. Unless I ever feel the urge to see this moon again. This scene of tragedy is once again sealed in silence. The tragedy of five years ago, and the tragedy tonight. Tragedy, good lord, I can't speak. <laughs> I wonder where the little lady is now. If only I could put a smile back on her face before the day dawns. But I won't find the answers here. I'd better follow my own leads. I guess what I'm most just like, okay, the man got convicted and then Camilla moved out to live with Lynn because I guess she didn't have anybody else to live with or like have 
take her in? Like, couldn't have, like, Caminella maybe taken her in? But either way, why would they just leave the house like this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I know it's for dramatics, but, like, in real life, you wouldn't just leave the house to rot. <laughs> yeah. I guess it thoroughly depends on, like, the ownership rights, etc. Mm-hmm. I mean, usually in a case like that, fucking, if there's no family for it to go to, it usually goes into, like, you know, the custody of the state kind of shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is a fictitious land where we don't know what the heck happens with the property laws in it, so God only knows. <laughs> it's like, man, I barely know real property laws. You think I know fictitious ones? Hell no. And property laws wildly differ per country, too, so it's just like, you know. <laughs> you know. Just as I thought. This little girl is safe in her bed. Why did she go earlier, though? <laughs> Murder, execution, jailbreak, betrayal, and now kidnapping. This last link in the long chain of a sad fate lit a fire in Jowd's heart. And the chance to turn it all around is right here in this room. I'm getting a strange premonition. Everything that happened so far tonight has related back to me in some way. And I bet this mistaken written abduction does, too. Chapter 13. Uh, knowing how many chapters there are in this game, we're getting closer to the end. I visited the novelist's apartment again. I'm hoping to be able to do something about this mistaken identity kidnapping. As long as there's any possibility that it could be his own daughter who was kidnapped, I doubt the Justice Minister will call off the execution tonight. The key to dispelling the Minister's doubts is now in bed, coughing. And I need to use this key before that prison van arrives to pick up our death row inmate. My darling angel! Oh, just listen to that cough! You naughty thing! Did you leave your nice warm bed to go out into the night to play? A daughter after my own heart. But I must confess, I didn't even notice you were gone. Wow. I didn't go out to play. I went to buy Papa a birthday present. He said he wanted a new lighter. Oh, well, that's no reason to go out this late at night. But my fever finally went down. I could barely move before that. Just because your fever went down, child, doesn't mean you should still stay in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Baby logic, though. Oh, but look what it brought you. Your fever is worse now than ever. Here is to the feverish passion of my darling angel. Mama? Yes, darling? Let's call Papa and wish him a happy birthday, even though it's already past midnight. Not tonight, Amelie. I hate you! Seriously, bitch, stop using your child as a pawn in your fucking relationship problems, damn. Uh, I mean, again, I know why she's doing it, so Oh I no, I know, but think of your child. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't like leverage your 
own <laughs> child against. Like, don't get her caught up in the middle of it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I knowing what we know, I do not disagree with the woman, but also, holy shit, the child. <laughs> yeah, the child shouldn't be caught up in this nonsense, for sure. <laughs> It looks like this little girl was safe all along. I already knew that, but I'm still relieved all the same. And there's another lucky development, too. Amelie wants to call her father. Now if I can just make use of that feeling somehow, that would surely bring the Justice Minister around. Oh, time to get this phone to a girl. Can we... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the phone! Yoink! Amelie, I told you you couldn't call him tonight. Why not? Listen to me, Amelie. Your father is about to make a big mistake. I want him to reconsider. What do you know about it, Mama? He's the one who's the Justice Minister, you know. All you do is write weird novels. <laughs> I just mind it sucks. <laughs> what do you mean, weird? How dare you disparage my romantic expressions? Now you've really made me angry, you really have. How do you expect me to forgive such an insult? Bitch, she's five. <laughs> she's ten. I hate you! <laughs> there. I'll be keeping my eye on you now so you won't do anything else mischievous. Mischievous. Like calling your father. I hate you. I can hear you, you know. Oh, what a pair. I don't know what this family's issues are, but I do know I have to do something about this lady so Amelie can call. Uh, her mother's overbearing? <laughs> there's, yeah. not much, there's not much to it, Sissel. <laughs> Mama, what is Papa about to do? Never mind. Nothing you need to know right now, Amelie. Why is everything always such a big secret? I'm part of this family too, you know. It's not something for children's ears. You'll understand someday. I don't want to know someday. I want to know now. It's not fair. You just don't want to tell me. I just want to wish Papa a happy birthday. Not tonight. If it was up to me, I'd let her call him. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna help us. Hmm, nice basket. I'd better not put out the lamp right now. It will only pour oil on the flames of anger in this lady's heart. <laughs> If I want to give Amelie a chance to use the telephone, I have to think of a way to keep her mother out of the way. Let's swing harder. Make chum. Oh goodness, look at the time! As I bask in my tale of love, time has been moving on at the speed of light. Hmm, so even though she's immersed in love, she still can hear this, eh? But this won't buy enough time for her daughter to make a phone call. There must be something else I can distract her with. Hmm, mousey? Speak, speak, speak. That did nothing. <laughs> Hmm, the lady's dictionary. Wasn't this on her desk before? 
the poor thing, destined to never be returned to the bookshelves. A drop of mouse hunter? Oh no! <laughs> the mouse is in peril! <laughs> Emotionally attached to the mouse. The mouse is now in mortal danger. <laughs> oh, wait, the mouse is there. Now, what if I. Well, well. Having a good time, are we, little rodent? Sweet dreams! <laughs> Did you fancy the vintage, my whiskered friend? Jesus Christ, lady! What the fuck? The amount of mouse abuse in this game. <laughs> Horrible! She's more powerful than I thought. It looks like she tripped the wall candelabra to the side, too. To one side, too. Hmm, the angle of those candles. I get the feeling I've seen something very similar to that quite recently. Well, we can't do anything with the actual sconce, though, apparently. Oh, the poor little thing. Oh, the poor little thing! Programmed this mouse of yours. Oh heavens! A blackout? At a critical time like this? Of course, a dim light suit my story of love very well, but I myself am not very fond of the dark. And this chandelier just narrowly missed the back of my head. I love the thrill of romance, but I don't need these kinds of thrills, thank you. That's dangerous, okay. Mm. Yeah, really. No, ew, ew! Lady? You gonna drink that? <laughs> Wine moms can't be stopped. Ah, what a wonderful atmosphere. Perfect for a clandestine meeting in the dusky twilight. I don't know exactly know how this situation came about, but I think I owe that rat an apology. <laughs> the, yes. Oh, the rat seems to be unconscious. Yes. Unconscious, not fry to hell. <laughs> God. Sorry, an opportune time to put a biscuit in my mouth. <laughs> biscuit. I got, um... I got these pumpkin spice cookies from Trader Joe's. They're very good. Oh man, sounds good. But now that the room has changed into this, maybe I can use it somehow. I'm so sorry, Mouse. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please forgive us for our crimes. Oh, that's just sadder. No. <laughs> oh, his little tail. Hmm. 
What a naughty chandelier. Do it at the right time, or there we go. <gasps> Amelie, Amelie, help me, <laughs> Mama. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm too dizzy. I can't get up. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. Oh no! What is she? Weakness of my darling angel. That chandelier is on her there tighter than her wedding band. She won't be able to escape on her own. Can I Help! Help! What? What is going on here? Holy oh, look! Do you see this? Help me, please! <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm too sick. I can't get out of bed. My head is spinning. So I guess you'll just have to stay up there spinning too. <laughs> Looks like this lady won't be going anywhere for a while. Now the little girl can call her father. The only trouble is she can't reach it. I guess I'll just have to deliver it to her. Oh, that's right. The angle of those candles. I saw something very similar just recently, didn't I? Uh... Oh my god, I'm gonna roast this lady. <laughs> Why are we abusing this rat so much? Oh my god, hi friend, hi Kylie, I'm sorry you're just in time for mouse abuse. <laughs> oh, why are we doing these horrible things? Now I really owe that poor rat an apology, but this might be a really good chance for me too. I have to get that phone to Amelie. shenanigans are going on. You missed a lot happening. <laughs> a lot's been... it's been going. Mama! What, what in the world is going on here? Okay, Mama? I'll only be a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I love this kid. She's pretty good. <laughs> so cute. Oh, don't you dare, Amelie! I won't have it! Get me down! You? Of course it is, silly. 
What did you think? But I heard they said you were. No, never mind. It's nothing. Silly old Papa. Happy birthday, Papa. Birthday? Oh, right. It was my birthday today, wasn't it? I'm sorry we couldn't celebrate tonight. Thanks to mean old Mama. Oh, your mean old Mama. I mean, your mother. What is she up to right now? Well, she's certainly up all right. Just my hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> my stubborn mother is kind of tied up at the moment. Get me down! She needs to be taught a lesson for causing us so much trouble. No, Homily. I'm the one who was wrong. Huh? Could you tell your mother I'm sorry? What do you have to be sorry about? I was just about to make a terrible mistake, but it's all right now. Oh, okay. You're still young. There's a lot I can't tell you right now. The job of a justice minister is very complicated, as you see. Okay. But just remember, you're always the most important thing to your mother and me. Did you do something naughty to your mother? If you did, I want you to apologize. I don't think I did anything. I was just sitting here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I'll apologize. That's a good girl. Okay, Papa. Have a good night. I love you. I love you too, Amelie. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Wiggle. Good um, night, Papa. Our apartment's on fire. <laughs> Mama? I'm sorry. My goodness. Why the sudden change? I... I guess I was wrong about you. I didn't understand. Oh, Homily. I thought all you ever did was write these weird novels. That makes me a little sad. Papa said the job of a justice minister was complicated. Yes, your father's job is very, very complicated and difficult. That's why I couldn't talk to you about most of it. But you're right. I shouldn't treat you like such a little girl anymore. You're growing up after all. I promise to cop stop calling your novels weird and try actually reading them. Oh, what? Don't. Oh, uh, maybe you'd better wait until you're a little older for that. Oh, okay. So, Amelie, um, if you're feeling a little more charitable towards your old mama, do you think you could let me down now? You know, I would love to do that, but I'm just feeling too dizzy and sick right now. Oh, shit. Tonight, on this holiest of nights, my deadline, it looks like the only one thing pressing on me will be this chandelier. Here's to Papa and Mama's darling angel. All of a sudden, everybody is getting along again. It's such an abrupt change. I can't understand it. Is this what family is all about? In any case, the situation has changed dramatically now. I just hope the mystery the uh, I just hope the mysteries of me can be cleared up as quickly as the furrows on the minister's brow. I don't know where Camilla is, but at least now the justice minister's doubts are dispelled. I think I'll go back to his office, where everybody is waiting for the prison van. 